Welcome back to Learning Economia. In this video, we are going to discuss the endogenous growth theory. The idea of that economic growth is due to reasons that are internal to the economy and not because of external reasons. This is what is meant by endogenous growth aspect. So, what is endogenous growth theory all about? The endogenous growth theory uses the concept that economic growth is mainly due to factors that are very much internal to the economy and not because of any external factors. This kind of theories are built on the idea that improvements in innovation, technology, knowledge, human capital, etc. lead to productivity which would positively affect the economic outlook. Moving to endogenous growth theory, I mean uh, uh, what I am going to uh, do is I am going to give you a uh, general idea about endogenous growth theory. Uh, right now we are not focusing on any particular endogenous growth theory. There have been various uh, versions of endogenous growth theory. So uh, before that, before understanding the various versions, let's understand what endogenous growth theory is all about in general. Okay. Endogenous growth theory was a first, uh, this was first created due to deficiencies and dissatisfaction with the idea of exogenous growth theories or exogenous factors uh, which uh, determine the long term economic growth. Uh, we can see that the theory was established to refute the neoclassical exogenous growth model because it made predictions about the economic growth without factoring in technological change. The endogenous growth theory challenges um, the, uh, many ideas uh, by placing importance on the role of technological advancements. Since long term economic growth is derived from the growth rate of economic output per person, it would depend upon the productivity levels. In turn, productivity would depend on uh, progress of technological change which relies on innovation, human capital, etc. And these factors are considered to be internal to the economy and not external factors. Coming to the assumptions of endogenous growth theory. Economists who believe in the theory emphasize the need for a government to provide some incentives such as subsidies for business uh, in the private sector. Uh, because it would motivate business to invest in research and development so that this would contribute to innovation. There are increasing returns to scale by investing in human capital through education or training programs. Doing so, uh, this would improve the quality of labor which would further increase the productivity levels in the economy. And you can see that the government should enact policies that help entrepreneurs which would create new business and new jobs. Investment should be made to improve infrastructure and manufacturing processes in order to achieve innovation in production. Also, you have to assume that intellectual property rights such as copyrights, patents, etc. These are incentives for business to expand their operations. Coming to different versions of endogenous growth model, there have been different versions or different varieties of in endogenous growth model starting with the arrow model which is known as the famous AK model of economic growth. This model is used to explain the economic changes as a result of innovation as well as technology. The learning by doing model is used in the arrow model to explain how self practice and innovation would result in productivity as well as improved human capital. It's because uh, learning by doing would lead to decrease in labor which is required to create a unit of output. Coming to the second model which is famously uh, known as the Lucas model. Uh, Lucas model would explain how economic growth especially in the long term is attributed to the accumulation of human capital. So in order to produce human capital what we need is education. So the uh, concept of education is used here. Uh, therefore the model assumes that human capital is the only input element in the education sector. It assumes that economic output is developed by using physical capital and human capital. As a result, what we could see is that the ratio of physical capital to human capital is a measurement which is used to determine the total uh, capital in an economy as per this model. Third is the Rama model. This is also one of the famous models, uh, especially uh, you when you are concerned about um, this uh, endogenous growth models. This model considers changes in technology to, en to be endogenous and therefore technological advancements lead to economic improvements. You can see that this model assumes that innovative ideas are very much important uh, especially when you consider economic growth. Combining improvements to human capital and existing knowledge would create innovative ideas which would enhance the production of goods in the economy. So we have discussed uh, 
several um, several uh, endogenous growth models uh, various versions of uh, endogenous growth model actually we were not going through the details of uh, all these models we just uh, touched upon each of the models uh, in order to have a uh, a glimpse of what these models were all about so we got some idea regarding what each and uh, each endogenous growth model uh, focuses upon so uh, having said so let's understand the limitations of endogenous growth theory endogenous growth theory uh, it draws uh, some criticism for relying on assumptions that cannot be assessed so accurately and there is no empirical evidence to validate the theory in some endogenous growth models uh, some may also argue that the difference between the physical capital as well as human capital is not that distinct as uh, it is told in the endogenous growth models others may also argue that endogenous growth theory disregards the role of organizations and places too much weight on human capital during the mid 90s uh, mid uh, 1980s and all you could see a group of economists uh, which uh, who uh, this economist uh, uh, group was led by paul romer and who became um, totally dissatisfied with exogenously driven explanation of this long run productivity growth etc and uh, this group of economists what they have done is that they have developed a uh, different class of models in which the key determinants of growth were endogenous to the model and the name endogenous growth carries significance that the long run growth rate is determined from within the model rather than from rather than uh, determined by some exogenously growing variables like unexplained technological progress okay the simplest version of endogenous growth model which is known as the ak model and this is based on the assumption of a constant saving ratio this model shows how elimination of diminution returns can lead to endogenous growth so uh, in this video we are going to look at um, uh, the initial model of endogenous growth model that is the ak model uh, the one put forward by arrow Uh, the main property of uh, endogenous growth models is the absence of diminution returns to capital this thing you have to uh, keep in your mind so the production function without diminishing returns is expressed as y is equal to ak where a is uh, a shows uh, po uh, positive constant uh, and uh, like one you take in the case of cobb douglas production function and uh, it's considered to be an index of the level of technology that is used for production and k is uh, in broad sense uh, this would include capital capital which would combine physical as well as human capital so to assume away the absence of diminishing returns to capital in the ak production function okay output per capita is given by uh, small y is equal to capital y by l which is equal to a and k by l is equal to ak Uh, and the apl and mbk are constant apl means average productivity of labor and marginal productivity of capital that is uh, apl and mbk these things are assumed to be constant and uh, a is considered to be greater than 0 in the solo model we have seen that the growth rate of capital was given by yk into k by k is equal to s function of k by k minus n minus delta this becomes equation number 2 here we have to understand that the symbol y is used small y is used to denote the growth rate of any variable and s is uh, your marginal propensity to save k small k is the k by l that is capital out per capita capital or capital labor ratio n is the rate of uh, population growth and delta is the rate of depreciation if you substitute um, uh, f Uh, into k by k a is is equation uh, uh, then we get y k is equal to s a which is equal to n plus delta which will become equation number three it is not possible to show that per capita growth can now occur in a long run without uh, even without some ex exogenous technological knowledge now in the case of a k model the downward sloping curve. Uh, is replaced by the horizontal line which is shown by sa okay and this means that yk is a it it shows the dis vertical distance between the two lines sa and n plus delta if the technology is ak then saving curve is a horizontal line at the level sa and if sa is greater than n plus delta then k grows perpetuity k uh, grows in perpetuity okay and since if the two lines are parallel yk is constant and to be more specific it has no uh, it has not got any functional relation to k alternatively stated k always grows at a steady state of uh, or steady 
uh, rate okay and y is equal to ak uh, we have seen that uh, since y is equal to ak y y shows you are um, income that is y by star into k at every point of time furthermore this when per capita consumption um, that is c is equal to 1 minus s into y where phi, uh, where s is the saving rate not phi s s is the saving rate and the growth rate of consumption which is equal to y into k this means that all the per capita variables in the model would grow at the same rate there is an economy which is characterized by the uh, ak technology this would display positive long run per capita growth even in the absence of some exogenous technological change furthermore you can see that the per capita growth rate in equation 4 uh, this would depend upon the behavioral parameters of the model such as your saving rate rate of population growth etc uh, alternatively if the level of technology a, a improves then what happens is that um, Uh, one, uh, this uh, will create some changes if the elimination of a government or distortion affects uh, this would rises a and then the long run growth is considered to be higher changes in the rate of depreciation uh, uh, saving rate population growth uh, etc this would have permanent effects so that's all uh, we are ending this endogenous growth model i request you to go through uh, uh, the growth models of romer as well as uh, lucas if you want me to discuss those models i'll be discussing uh, please give a message in the telegram group or you can comment in the comment box which is will right below the uh, video so that's all please like share and subscribe this channel for more videos thank you for watching and i welcome you to my telegram group and telegram channel to discuss your doubts